uh, they should be it by Tuesday. All right, with that being said, my, my name is Todd McDonald. I'm the Director of Program and Member Experience for the Cascade Pacific Council. I have uh, been working for the Boy Scouts since about 1990 with a couple years out. The Eagle Scout from Castle Rock, Washington, the Snook District. And, uh, and uh, I've been uh, camping in our councils at least, uh, oh, I don't know, 20 years or more. And so I'm excited to be here tonight. This first part here is about 30 minutes of just talking about the basics of, of, of camp, some of the things that match everything that all of you will have the same, um, uh, it's the same no matter what camp that you're at. And then what we'll do is we'll break you up into your various camping, uh, summer camp groups, and you'll have an opportunity to go uh, to their breakouts where you are. For those of you that know Camp Clark, we'll stay here and we'll continue on with the webinar for their program tonight. Uh, the other programs that we'll be, we'll be streaming tonight will be Camp Pioneer and um, Camp Baldwin. So just be prepared that uh, your, your words will be heard all over. Um, all right, also those of you that paid uh, in full by May 1st and, uh, um, and have uh, submitted your order by May 18th, uh, should be had the opportunity to pick up your shirts today, um, and so uh, we will do that in your breakouts when you when you move on. All right, that means let's get on, let's get let's get on the road here. Okay, so first I'd like to um, well I already talked about that. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about fees and refunds, your rosters, the special needs, medical forms. Uh, medications, emergency, uh, emergency procedures, and, and general questions. Now, what I mean when we get to the general questions and answer that is about if you want to ask what time we're going to, you know, go hunt the bear at Camp Clark, um, I'm not the person to ask. You'll have to wait for that that discussion. Uh, but if you want to know, you know, hey, listen, what if um, a, a boy drops at this time? That's what I'm all about. All right. Know that uh, if you haven't been there already, cpcbsa.org forward slash camp downloads is your um, location for everything that we have for you. So feel free to use that. Those of you online, feel free to open up another tab and, and check what's out there. All the leader guides are there, tutorials are there, and, and we just try to keep it all in one place for you so that you don't have to go look anywhere else. Also, 492.camping at cpcbsa.org. Is another place you can email uh, things um, in your program guides at this point uh, if you haven't got one already your camp director's email is in there and it's probably unless you're trying to figure what what the, what the camp directors know is their program what's going to happen when you get there all right what the, we at the council knows anything about how to pay for what you're doing and get registered all right so if you have any questions about registering and paying that's really what what me and my team on on the service center does. And if you have any questions about program or anything that's going to happen at camp, I highly recommend you, you speak directly to your camp director after tonight. All right. All right. The fees at camp. You know, uh, our fees are the highest, but they're not the lowest. I know that our expenses are matched against our year round costs, and um, they also help pay for food. As you can know, that. Uh, uh, every year our camp fees have gone up about 10 bucks, but think about your household and the food and what it costs to feed you for a week. I don't know about you, but it's costing me a little bit more every year, and that's a, most of what that is. Um, also, sooner or later, I have to pay some of my camp staff more than we used to pay them to get them to not go get real lives. And so, uh, and so that, that, that is a factor of why, why does camp fees go up? Those are the two largest factors. Um, uh, again, on staffing, I know we hire 400 camp staff to operate our camps, uh, the largest in, in our area. Um, we have in, insurance and utilities. Our deadline's May 1st, that uh, was a free t-shirt. Notice that any, uh, so if you, at May 1st, we passed the deadline. So if you had 10 kids down, you owe, and you drop, and you quit, and you just decided you're done with scouting and you want to leave, you owe $750. For those 10 kids, 75% of that is now non-refundable. 
The next big deadline, we've told everybody to pay by June 1st, which is today. If you haven't, please do. But your danger zone is two weeks prior to arrival. At that point, there are no refunds, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I was on vacation, I forgot. Okay, yeah. Well, Joey's not gonna be here. I understand that. No refund, no refund two weeks prior to you go. Now there is exceptions and we'll talk about that, but for the most part, know that that's a big deadline. So it's in your best interest to re, there is no penalty for reducing an ad other than the fact that a camp could possibly get over full and you'd be stuck. We only have one camp that's in, that is like that right now. So you're probably not gonna be, that's gonna be an issue for you, but just to know, that's, that's what you're, what we're talking about. Uh, people say about adult fees, you know, you don't have to settle your adult fees until, you, you know, you get to camp if you want. I recommend that you just try to get all squared away a week or so ahead of time, print out your invoice and bring it with you. All right. Have, when you arrive at camp, how many of you, this will be your first time kind of leading your group through the, the trenches here? A few of you? I tell you, having your, pay, your fees paid in full when you arrive saves you about a half an hour. All right, because there's a long line of people that uh, that don't do that, and everybody has to be worked through a, a process. So, if you can get it all paid for before you get there, I'll let you know. One of the things that you, if if you have, um, let's say you're going to Camp Clark, all right, and you have two people staying all week, and you have one person coming Monday and Tuesday and being replaced Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, Thursday, Friday, we're okay to count that just as three, even though it's going to be five people. It is one person per week, all right? Um, don't make us do higher math. Just, you know, understand that we're not trying to gouge you for it. We're just trying to make sure we're covering the expenses. Adult fees is not food. Adult fees is, is, is utility, shower, staff, medical um, expense. All those things that, that operate for the youth are available to adults while you're there and costs and, and are passed on to the adult fees. Um, if you have people that are coming up just for the day, especially for the barbecues uh, at the end of the season, at the events or, or whatever, a great time to do that. Feel free to do that, just check in, make sure you check in at the office and pay whatever the, the meal fee is. I don't know that we're uniform, I don't even know that that number is exactly right, but use it as a guideline. If you're gonna show up for a breakfast and you're gonna pay five or six bucks for, for breakfast. Okay, if you simply overpaid, all right, we're gonna refund you as quickly as possible. Our goal is to refund you as quickly as possible, especially Boy Scout troops, because you probably only have one reservation with us all summer long. And so if it ends up that you know we owe you money, we try to take care of that as soon as we can. Cub Scout Pack's a little different because we might have four or five reservations for you. You might wanna wait till you get through the whole thing before we decide if you owe any money. Or not. So oftentimes we won't get to that until um, October. Um, if you need to decrease the numbers, I kind of explained that how you want to do that. Um, if for some reason that you have a situation where somebody instantaneously moves out of town, there's a custody issue, illness of a scout, death in the family, all sorts of things, you know, um, uh, injury that, that prevents a scout from coming, you know, you still need to make sure you're paid in full, but we will then come back and we'll review your, you can fill out a form for that while you're at camp, and we will review that and get back to you as to um, uh, the refunds of some of these extraneous issues. All right. Um, again, I talked about this mail. We're going to send them out by October. We try again. We try to sooner than that, but that's our goal. Um, we we send the checks by the way to the registered committee chairman of the unit all right so um if for some reason you're expecting a refund and your committee chairman has moved and there's no one right person you haven't registered a new person at that spot might want to let us know because that's where we're sending them. okay um all right and again we, we the checks are, are signed to the pack or troop and not to individual um okay so rosters this is a pain point for a lot of people. Our youth rosters are fine as long as you put them in Tentaroo. You go in and make sure you populate all those rosters. I know it needs 
uh, date of birth. We refer the actual date of birth, but if you know the month and year, that's fine. Pick a day. Um, most of the reason why we need a date of birth is so that we can um, make sure that we, if we have age-specific programming, we know how to plan. And all of our camps kind of do. All right, so please uh, make sure you get those rosters in Teneru um, and fill, bring, bring a print out of that. Um, voice, uh, the, um, you could, oh, there's a place here uh, at uh, Camp Two Tutorials on how to um, do that, how to add youth and, and, and put that information in. One of the things that we're going to do new this year is this new 72 hour rule. I'm gonna to jump to that right now. Uh, how many of you are going to a camp that will last more than 72 hours? All right, all right. So there's a couple of weeks at Butte Creek and, um, uh, and uh, Clark are the Cub Scout camps that have uh, that and all the Boy Scout camps. New rule, all right, so don't, um, and this rule exists to help make sure that we're more safe keep our liability insurance down, make sure the youth are more safe, but we wanna make sure that all the adults that are in camp longer than 72 hours are registered as an adult leader. Do not need to be registered as an adult leader in your unit, but they need to be able to validate that they've been registered. The system also says that they need to have a background check. All I care about is that you print a MyDoc scouting leader report, and um, on that report, you uh, on that report, you you list. I mean, you show all from the MyDoc scouting report everybody that's there and their youth protection. I uh, if you are the key three, and that is your. Unit leader, scoutmaster, cubmaster, um, you know, crew advisor. If you're the key three and, and the committee chairman or the charter rep, you have the ability to go in to training manager, to write that down, training manager, and upload a, um, or in, and download a list of registered adults with the validation of the youth protection. So that's what you're going to need to bring is that report. I almost had a screencast ready for you today. I don't know about you. We got a new update for Windows and all of a sudden my uh, my uh, video tools don't work. So um, I'll have that fixed and I will put that up here and that uh, I'll I will make sure that you look on the uh, web tools on the uh, 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 we'll, we'll plaster it everywhere, but it'll be a, a screencast on how to actually use the training manager to print that report that you need. Now, if you're 72 hours, if you're if you're showing up, you're dropping off your kids, you're spending the night, all right, and then you um, and then you come back and stay another two nights. That time is all counted as one, all right. So you would need to be registered to do that. The other frustration is, is that you can't be a type, you cannot be a Tiger Cub adult. Tiger Cub adults are not registered leaders and they do not get a background check. They are part of the youth registration. So um, I am actively working with the Boy Scouts of America to create a lower cost registration position that has a uh, background check to it, but it's not gonna be ready for the summer. So just, I'm sorry, that's the way it's gonna be. And that's the process. So before I move on, I think I skipped, but um, any questions about that policy and that rule? Yeah. When you're registering, are you registering them as a committee member? Or? There's a couple different choices that you can make. Um, there is a, I think it's a 90, uh, 90 U, or what, it, there is the uh, uh, Unit Scouter Reserve. Unit Scouter Reserve. That'd be a fine one. Merit Badge Counselor? Well, one, a Merit Badge Counselor is a district registration. Um, and it does come with a valid um, a background check. And it's free. And it is free. Yes? 
the unit protection must be after February 1st of this year? I love, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. the, um, the youth protection, uh, if you completed youth protection before um, February when the new training came out, you're going to expire anytime. And so um, the, uh, the, the rule of, on this, as far as I'm concerned, I just seen a MyDoc scouting report that says that your ballot and your youth protection is up to date. If you printed it now, before they rolled it all back and you, you came with it, I'd be okay with that. You see what I'm saying? You hear what I'm, you hear what I'm putting down here? <laughs> but if not, at some point they're gonna roll it all back to, to, um, so that anybody who hasn't done the new training will not be um, certified. And it's, it's like the other thing, I don't know what when they're gonna do that. So it's best to get everybody to do the more up-to-date youth protection training if you can. That's coming to camp. If you haven't taken that training, how many have taken it? Do you know it's the first training that we have now got? Um, where it's the first time I've seen in the list of materials to bring to uh, a training for the in-person training, tissues. <laughs> it's... It's strong training. It's 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 like the original training. So so we want to make sure that as many people can take that beforehand as possible. Yes. So I, I just want to be clear to whatever we're doing with the adults. So I'm I'm the dead leader. My cup, my cup. So I'm already got yeah, youth protection, all that. And my my other adults are from our parents. And they don't need anything, or they need youth protection. If they're going to stay more than 72 hours, if they're going to take stay more than 72 hours, then they need to be registered in, in a position that has a background check, which is not Tiger Cub Den Leader. And not, it's not, I'm sorry, which is not Tiger Cub Adult Partner. All right, so if they're going to stay longer than 72 hours at camp, they need to actually register. Need to with the Boy Scouts of America, be become a registered adult. adult with the Boy Scouts of America. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and just something you haven't hit on yet would be so they have to be registered adults, youth protection training, and Part C of the medical form. If they're staying longer, than right? Staying I haven't got to the medical part yet, but yes, everybody would need. Everybody would need. If you're staying longer than 72 hours at any camp, you would need all three of those things. Yes? Does it matter where they're registered? As long as they're registered. You go back. Register. Right. As, as long as they can produce a registration. So let's say I'm asking you for this list. If you have people that are arriving, if, if you have people who are coming to camp who are not on that list, okay, that are not on your unit list because they're from another unit or whatever, they can go online. Just print out their their membership card and and their youth protection card. Be, it'd be fine. Yes. So, so if we have presents coming from Nebraska, and they're going to have tissues. They're good as long as it's good in Nebraska. Yeah, I, I I wish I could tell you that. Yeah, I'm I, if the cut specifically for this example, we're talking about the cousin's dad. Yeah. The cousin's dad, as long as he brings his his membership ID card and his youth protection, he's good to go. Yes. Um, here in June, let's say six months is going to be eighteen dollars ish. Don't quote me on that. My higher math function is all right. I know. I know this is hard. I was not happy about this. Unfortunately, um, these are our 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 rules. Yes. Am I remembering? Don't you still need at least one registered adult for the whole week, the whole time, and maybe that's too deep leadership? It's, I mean, if, you, if we had people ro rotating in throughout the week and nobody was staying longer than 72 hours and nobody was registered, is that clear what you're saying? I, I, you could get away at a Boy Scout camp without having a <laughs> registered adult leader there all week. I wouldn't advise that. We would have to put you with 
another troop that had that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. We were being told that we didn't have somebody there all the whole time in the Georgia too, but I thought that was the case. You should you should have to do that. It's not something we necessarily track. Yeah. Yes. You mentioned the third requirement, but I couldn't hear you. Oh, part C of the medical. I haven't got to that point yet. You have to have a doctor sign medical if you're gonna be there more than 72 hours. Yes. A merit badge counselor would would cover that. You just you would have to bring a separate you registration form. Yeah. The the, the uh, your, yes, that would be true. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Um, the merit badge signups is a for those of you in the Boy Scout camps. This is a, a, a the online merit badge signup is a is for you. It's, a, it's supposed to make things easier for you. It is not a requirement. You don't have to do it. But I'll tell you what it does for you is it, it, it kind of gives you an idea what their interests are. You get the information in the system and it lets us know that, oh my gosh, I have 90 kids signed up for my 10 o'clock you know, oceanography class. You know, Maybe we should plan differently. And so the more that we work together, the, the better it is. Some people don't like to do it because people change at the last minute. One really slick thing about the Tenaru system is if you get everybody to do it, you can print out the blue cards from Tenaru. And there's, and there's a, a, our system it let's show, uh, has two tutorials on how to do that. Um, payment is, is not required for these merit badges, and, and you can do it if you want. You don't have to. Um, the important thing is, is that uh, you know that you, you put that in there. Certain merit badges are have limitations, so we have light, um, we have lotteries for those merit badges, and those lotteries are always done on Sunday night. So you want to make sure that uh, that you want to get that communicated to your camp. If you don't have it in the system, at least send them an email. Your camp director is letting you know who you want in the lotteries if you're not going to be there on Sunday. Question. Yes. So those lotteries will be the people who pre registered plus the people that registered when they come in on Sunday, and then if there's, but you have to cut the numbers down at that day. Yeah, a lottery, yeah. So ultimately, we get by dinner, let's say, we'll have a list of everybody who's interested, and then we literally go through and uh, pull names out of the hat or whatever. Okay. How about the Monday start week? What's How that? about the Monday start the week? So we, because merit badges start right off right that, we still ask for that information to be communicated. But we will run that on Sunday, so when you arrive on Monday, we can tell you the results. So we don't want you to wait till Sunday night because merit badges have already started. Good question. All right. Um, there's other, you know, horse, horse rides and and other these and uh, some of these uh, special uh, event fees like rafting and uh, kayaking. Um, they can be paid there. You can pay it. When you get there, they tend to be first come, first serve. No, sorry, that's just for Boy Scouts. That's just for the Boy Scouts, right? Yeah, I, that whole slide was only really about Boy Scouts. Um, again, if you want to figure out how to do this, you can. Um, there's a tutorial on cpcbsa.org/camp tutorial to show you how to how to do all of that. Okay, special needs forms. If if you have any kids, a scout with special needs. Um, since we're going to hand out to you your, uh, your your program guides, or if you don't have them already, these are the special need forms information on the back. Please, uh, you can take some tonight. I'll put them in this first pew here. Um, that lets us know if you have adults or youth that have special needs that we need to work with. At this point, you'll have everybody's email address. I would scan those and email them directly to your camp director. Up until now, it's okay. We've been taking them. But now, between now and camp, you don't want to wait. You don't want it to go to one place, another place, another place. You know, just email it directly to the camp director, let them know, and uh, and we can work with you. Oftentimes, it stimulates a, a call back from a camp cook, um, us to try to figure out um, CPAP machines and and uh, and how to get your things charged and and all that. Um, now, so we don't have, but it's important. No, we don't have any power available at our campsites for our CPAP machines. So you need to come up with a rechargeable model of some sort to come, and they do exist. I know they may be more expensive than the one that you have. For some people that have a 12-volt battery with a converter, however you want to do that, we will provide opportunities to charge them 
but we don't have a way to plug something into some mysterious bush in Camp Pioneer to make it run. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a couple other things we do, uh, the, our menus are online, um, and uh, uh, again, those special needs forms are important to get to us. It, it's, it's amazing. Let me just tell you this. I don't know if your camp director did this. If you haven't had an eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball conversation with each parent of a scout that's coming with you, tell me what medications your kid is normally on that they're not going to be on during camp. Great question. And why? Right. All right. You might want to have that question. Has your scout, has, has the scout ever exhibited, you know, behavior that would be concerning to a camp or thing while they in, in a stressful situation, All right? Because when kids are in school, and the stress of that's nothing, but camp can be very, very stressful, and people can become man manic. They could be, they could um, be incredibly depressed. They, all sorts of things that becomes a big surprise, especially if it's a new scout to you. So I'm just telling you, have an eyeball to eyeball conversation with every parent. Sometime in the year, but practically before you bring them, if they're not going to be there, you're going to want to know the stories we could tell. All right. All right. Campsite assignments. I would love it. It's been a dream of mine to be able to say, hey, you want to sign up for a campsite? You can have it. But the reality is then I have to let less kids come to camp. So the best way to do to have more, more scouts come to camp and uh, is to make sure that we put as many people in camp as we can, reasonable, and so it's tough for us to decide on what campsite people can be in. So you have the opportunity, you still do, you can go in and choose your first, second, or third campsites um, in, in camp that you, that you want, and we'll do our best, all right? There's no guarantee. It's my hope that, that they, you will be contacted in some way ahead of coming to camp as to um, where you're going to stay and at least our plan. But even then, things happen. And so just know, be, be, one thing that you can always do to be very helpful, I was Scott Master for five years, I brought a tent with me every time I went to camp. And almost always stayed in it because I preferred it. Because my Scott Master's all, it's just the Scott Master's all smart. And so, uh, the, uh, but making sure that, um, that, that you come prepared that way would be great. Um, medical form. So we talked about that. You've been there more than 72 hours. You need a medical form. Um, medicals are good for a year. Here's a question that comes up. Let's say I got my medical done July 4th, all right, 2017, and I arrive at camp July 18th, 2018. Is my medical still good? Yes, it's still good. You got to the end of the month. Okay. Now, if you got your medical done on June 29th and you went to camp on July 1st, is your medical still good? No. So understand the, the way that, that that rule goes, but uh, that is the way. Uh, you have to understand that not all these rules are, uh, these are our, our things, right? We don't make this stuff up. <laughs> yeah. If you hypothetically here, the camp starts. July and it goes over into August because we got a week to test that. Your form expires at the end of July. Do I need a new one? Yes. Okay, because it expired mid September. Because August 1, you would be having expired medical form. Yeah, yeah. We're going to a shorter camp. Is there a, a version of the form that doesn't require the doctor's signature? Yeah, A and B. Yeah, everybody is required to do A and B. Okay, thank you. That's the, that's the health history and uh, medical waiver. All right. Adults also. What's that? Adults. And if you're if you're going to a long-term camp, but you're only staying a couple days, you only need A and B done. Everybody needs at least everybody comes to camp has at least A and B. Required for everybody that comes. C, the met, the doctor's signature part, is only required if you stay more than 72 hours. Everybody, yeah. Even me. Okay. Um Yes. Yeah. That's actually that's not true. I'm sorry. I said oh, that's from last year, and we were crazy enough to add these four day sessions. Those four day sessions at View Creek do require them. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good question. 
I will update my, my thing for tomorrow. Yes? Yeah, opportunity group that for, for the Park C form, you don't need to go and do a $150 appointment that takes three months of planning to get from your doctor. You can go to a place like Doctors Express, a walking clinic, tell them you need sports physical, and there's a good chance, depending on your insurance, that you'll pay either nothing for it or way it's deductible for your kids, or you'll pay very little. It will cost you less, and you can go that day and you decide to do it Saturday morning. Yeah, I, I think it, it don't hesitate for uh, to also just take the form and hand it off to your primary care physician and say, could you sign this? I mean, it depends on how, how, how long ago they saw, right? You know, but uh, so, yeah, but you need to get you just need a doctor's signature on there. The extent to which you want to call the exam a physical is up to the doctor who signs it. All right. The urgent care thing is still going. I think I saw. It. I do believe so, but yeah, I think urgent care uh, and uh, what is that one? Something Zoom care, I think, is another one too. There's definitely cheaper ways to do it. You need copies of your uh, health check too, right? Um, you just that, you don't need copies. You just need the information on your medical. That's required on Part A or B. I can't remember. Okay, medication. Last year we had a change of policy, so I want to let you know. Boy Scout camps. Raise your hand, Boy Scouts. We want you to take care of your own medicine. We will provide you locked. If you have your own locked way to keep your, it must be locked, and you must submit a record of medications given out by the end of the week. You will not get your patches or any refunds if you don't do that. We'll give you the form that you need to use. But we need to be able to have that. That is actually state law. All right. We need to keep track of the medicines that you receive. We do not need to dispense it. I'm going to leave the policy for the Cub Scout camps to your Cub Scout sections because they're done slightly different. Butte Creek is so much easier just to take care of the medicine because it's so short and, and all that time. And, and Cub Scout camp uh, are not used to taking care of other people's medicines. Whereas Boy Scout troops do it all the time. So please, I, uh, my guess is that the Cub Scout camps will continue to distribute the medicine. However, the, the, the rule is that you can, but it has to be in a lockable uh, device. And, and, it, and we need a record of the disbursements for the youth for the week. All right. We have right refrigeration for anything that needs to be refrigerated. We have a, a medical at every... A, a, a medic at every camp, and um, and so um, yeah, so I, I explained that. Okay, so do not just bring pills in a box or a bag or it. And I know I use a pill <laughs> minder myself, but that's not going to work. You, they need to be in the actual medicine bottles. Okay. Um, oops, hit the wrong button. Okay. All right. We will need to make sure that everybody that comes to camp, and that's everybody who spends the night, what is going to be youth protection trained. We are going to do our level best to do youth protection training at camp, but just have them do it before they come. Uh, any adult, any adult spends the night. Okay. Um, we had to make that determination because it says any adult leader in camp. Um, and we just decided that we'll just say who spends the night. It also helps us with day camp quite a bit. Um, the uh, again, and we'll talk about um, you know we're going to maintain youth protection rules and, and while we're at camp. We'll talk more about that, especially when we're at camp. I want to make sure that you set up some communication deals. Um, that cell phone coverage is very spotty. View Creek. Um, Pioneer is pretty tough to get reception anywhere. The other ones have okay places if you you know have the right service and stand on the right stump. Um, the um, but if there's emergencies in camp, and this is important, you call the scout office 503-226-3423. You call the scout office. You leave that number with anybody who needs us. All right. If it's during the day, there'll be somebody there that can get us. And if it's at night, there is a uh, emergency tree. People like me who go, hey, 
I know it's two o'clock in the morning, but somebody has to pick up their son in an hour, right? <laughs> and and so uh, uh, so just know that that we really want to save that for emergencies. You know, tell can you tell Johnny that Bill that his dad's gonna come and pick him up tomorrow instead of his grandma? <laughs> no, that's that's not that's not important. I mean, that's good information. The boy will figure it out. Okay. Um, Internet access at camp is not great. Um, many of our youth, our our, um, sat our internet is via satellite, which sounds exotic, but it's really a pain in the butt. All right, and so to have you sitting around in some place, you know, at a web cafe, you know, doing work is is going to be very tough for you to do. The bandwidth just is, does not exist for that. Um, but if you do need internet for work, you may want to leave camp. I mean, probably within 25 minutes of all of our camps, there's a place that has decent Wi-Fi somewhere, <laughs> Wi-Fi. Um, but otherwise, contact your camp director ahead of time. I know some of you will say, I have an important conference call, or I have this that I need to do. And depending on the camp, we might be able to help. All right? Um, and so you, you're going to have to just know that the technology out in the middle of the boonies is not necessarily easy and available. So just kind of come prepared for that. Again, we talked about visitors. Um, the Friday or the last day, there's always something kind of fun for people to come. We don't really have an overnight accommodation for visitors or siblings and all that. They can try uh, a local hotel or, or campground. But uh, um, unfortunately, the way that things work out, having, having people stay overnight doesn't work out. All right, so make sure we check in at the office. And, uh, oh, if a scout is going to leave camp for a reason, soccer tournament, or need to go a family vacation, whatever it might be, and someone said, comes up and says, I am Joe's dad, and I'm here to pick him up, I said, okay, I, but he's just sitting right out here. And I said, great, stand right there. And we'll get on the radio, we'll get a leader, one of you, come down and verify that that's Joey's dad, and it's okay for him to leave with him. All right. Somebody in camp has to uh, has to say yes. This person is okay to take this scout off the property. All right. We have the train post orders today. Uh, if you haven't done so, um, uh, cbcbsa.org/preorder. You can see some of these things. Um, you can talk a little bit more about that in your group. So I, I want to run a little bit late. Those of you Boy Scouts, uh, sign up for camp next year. Uh, it's all set up. If you do it now, you're going to get an early bird fee, which is breaks this year. If you sign up after the um, August, uh, if you, after 